Okay, uh, yep. so my screen. Good. Yep. Uh, uh, the next talk will have um, Dia Farah uh, talking about zero kind of protocols and their numerous men in the middle attacks. Please go ahead and take. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Dia Farah, uh, master student at the Eurocom in France. Today, I'm going to present my paper, ZeroConf and their uh, numerous uh, men in the middle attacks, supervised by Professor Marc Dessier. With the booming of millions of, uh, and millions of IoT devices around the globe, manual network configuration of these devices is not an option anymore. Thus, the ZeroConf series of protocols has been gaining popularity because they ensure the possibility to just plug and play the gadgets. A lot of connected devices speaks at least one of these usability-oriented uh, protocols even without the user awareness. Using these protocols exposes the devices to several security risks and makes them vulnerable to numerous attacks. So we will start by a uh, brief introduction about ZeroConf, in particular Metricast DNS and DNS service discovery. Then we move to the core of our uh, work, which is composed of three main parts. The first one is describing our attacks, the second one is evaluating the attacks, and the third one is uh, detecting the attacks. During this presentation, and due to the shortage of time, we cannot describe the last two parts, and we will focus mainly on the first part where we made the attacks. But you can read the paper and you find everything described in details. So we start with the first part. Uh, there is, uh, the ZeroConf includes several protocols, such as um, multicast DNS, DNSSZ, LLMNR, we focus uh, on the popular uh, MDNS and DNSSD. For instance, all machines speaking Apple Bonjour are using MDNS and DNSSD by default. The purpose of MDNS is to permit devices to announce and resolve local domain names. And the purpose of DNSSD is to permit the device to announce and discover services in the network. This too uh, relies on the multicast group with the multicast uh, IP address uh, 224.0.0.251 to communicate with each uh, uh, other devices using the multicast channel. So in devices using MDNS and DNSSD has three main properties. We have the IP address, we have the local domain, na uh, domain name, and we have the local service name. The local domain name and the local service name shares the pseudo top level domain dot local, which is resolved using the multicast group mentioned in the previous slide. If you want to find further information about how this works and how these uh, names are uh, made, you can read our paper and we find you can find everything in details. Now we move to how uh, these protocols operate. We have uh, four devices in the multicast group, and the device number four has recently joined the network. So it requires the others if there is anyone is using his uh, IP, his local domain name, or his local service name. If nobody responds to the query, it means that the properties are available. Once the device claims his properties, he will announce to everyone and, uh, his services, uh, his domain name, and additional information that may be required to establish a connection later. At this point, the device number four wants to find available services in the network. So it sends a query asking uh, for uh, services that are available. In this situation, each device will respond with its services. We have a printing service offered by uh, connected device number one. We have a web service connected by, uh, offered by connected device number two and streaming service offered by connected device number three. Now, uh, device number four seeks the printing service. So it queries it asking it about uh, additional information to establish the connection with it. So the device number one, the provider of the printing service, will respond by saying everything required to use its services. Now we move to the part where we made the, our uh, attacks. During our experiments, we have designed four different scenarios for attacks, three technical ones and one social engineering attack. So we start by the first technical attack, which is convincing the client that the device's local domain name is resolved to the attacker's IP. The second technical attack is convincing the client that the device's local service name is reachable via the attacker's local domain name. The third technical attack is hijack the local service name and force the device to change it. And you have the social engineering attack, which is announce a similar local service name and bait the client into picking it. We start by the first attack. For every attack, I'm oversimplifying the attack scenario to make the attack succeed. 
there is several elements that can change the outcome of the attack. We went through uh, every, every tiny detail in the paper, but for the sake of the time, we will stick to an abstract level of the attack where we mention the most critical parts. So we have the uh, user, the attacker, and the connected device. Each one has the device properties, and the user will start by asking about the services. In this situation, the uh, connected device will respond by having a printing service. Then the user will ask uh, the connected device about additional information about the printing service in the multicast group. Now, the connected device responds in multicast. However, the attacker uh, responds in unicast to make his attack stealthy, so the uh, connected device won't, won't notice the malicious response. We notice in the response of the attacker, there is uh, the, the, uh, the IP address is changed, uh, which is corresponding to the local uh, the domain name. In this situation, well, in addition to uh, several elements that is described in the paper, the attacker succeeds at poisoning the cache of the user and uh, succeeds at releasing the attack. Now we move to the attack number uh, two. We have the device properties again. The user uh, asks about the services. The connected device provides the printing service. The user asks about additional information about the printing service. And we have the, in the situation, the attacker also changed the local domain name in the response uh, compared to the first attack. So in this situation to reach the printing service, you have to reach the attacker.local, which is corresponding to the attacker IP address. And again, with uh, with manipulating uh, some fields and some bits in the, the responses and the, uh, in the DNS records, the, attacks, the attacker will succeed at poisoning the cache of the user and uh, becoming the man in the middle. Now we move to the attack uh, number three, which is the most complicated, complicated one. We have the uh, device properties. Uh, the user asks about their services. The connected device uh, prov uh, provides the printing service. The user asks about more uh, information about the printing service. And in this situation, both the attacker and connected device responds in the multicast group. We notice that the attacker and the uh, connected device have the same local service name. And in the, this situation, will uh, will uh, will provoke a conflict resolution phase. Basically, the two devices will query themselves and about who's, who's uh, using the printing service, one, two, three. And if nobody's using it, th they both want to bind it to their local domain names. And basically, th so the two devices will have a conflict resolution phase, which is resolved by uh, the one who is having the higher lexicographic order uh the one with the higher looks the graphic order and you can check the paper how it, uh how it works so in this situation the higher looks graphic order is uh is gained by uh, the connected device and he's supposed to be the winner but we found during our experiments that the attacker can be non-compliant to the rfc in this uh, in this situation instead of responding by a query to very uh, to bind the, the local service name to its local domain name he will actually respond by a response by saying that the printing service is corresponding to his local domain name and it's traceable via uh, uh, its IP address. So in this situation, any device who doesn't uh, play the fair game and sends his ground wins and claims the names. By doing that, the attacker forces the connected device to rename the local service name it is using. Then they will both announce the uh, new local uh, service names. Now the user will end, uh, will end up reaching the attacker. The user sees the local service name only to reach the uh, printing service. Now the local service, the old legitimate uh, local service name is attached to another machine, which is the attackers. And the, the user cannot notice the change. He, he uses the same name, but uh, he ends up reaching a different machine. Now we move to the attack number four, where uh, we have the device properties again. The user will ask about uh, the services. We have the connected device providing printing service. The user will ask about more additional information about the printing service. 
And in this situation, the attacker will add an invisible character in the beginning of the local service name. The user will find in the user interface two uh, services having the same name. Knowing that the names are sorted, the user will most uh, will most likely pick the first one, which is corresponding to the malicious service, thus uh, succeeding at the attack. We move to our experiments. During our experiments, we have the following lab. We have for the user, we have used Windows machine and uh, a Linux machine, Ubuntu one. For the attacker, we have used a Kali Linux machine. And for the devices, we have used Apple TV, third generation, and HP printer. We have released uh, the experiments on other devices, but the behavior is the, is the same. And these two makes us cover all, uh, the possible, uh, all the possible outcomes that we have seen during our experiments. In addition to the different uh, operating system, the different scenarios, and the different devices, we went deeper through our experiments into every tiny detail that may impact the attack, like cache flash bit, white and priority of the uh, records, etc. Thus, we have 300 attacks. We won't present them here, but you can find everything in details in our paper. And the lessons we got from uh, this are the following. In addition to the usability uh, design of the protocols, there is three main problems that makes the hacker's job easier. The first is a non-compliant adversary can uh, generate a denial of service against a genuine participant, or he can even uh, steal the properties of a genuine participant. The second one, the unicast replies makes the task of the attacker easier by hiding his replies, like we have seen in attack number one and attack number two. And the third one, a non-compliant uh, implementation makes it even uh, easier. In fact, we, found, we have found cases where devices accept unicast responses, unicast responses when they are not supposed to. We have found cases where devices accept unicast responses without even uh, asking the question, can we consider this as a bug? But the good thing is the, security, uh, the severity of this problem is limited because the machines accepting the responses are only from the same uh, LAN domain, thus reduce the attack surface. Uh, considering these facts, we have been mentioning the following part of the RFC, that the implementation of protocol must be robust in general, and implementation must be con conservative in its sending behavior and liberal, liberal in its uh, receiving behavior. So should we consider all the possibilities or just consider how this uh, attack works? And this way makes us wonder if the RFC doesn't consider the consequence of having a non-compliant participant is a vulnerability, or it is outside of the scope of the RFC to do that. Because if we look, uh, the other RFC, even TCP, doesn't cover all the possible outcomes. For example, session, ha uh, session hijacking attacks, it relies on the higher level layer for countermeasures. So we move to our conclusions. So these protocols are used, uh, are used a lot, even in a well-configured uh, network. The use of these protocols makes the device vulnerable. Uh, covering every outcome may not be a solution. Uh, thus, uh, delicate uh, protection for uh, another entity, which brings onto light the code we have provided to detect such attacks based on Zeek, known as Bro as well. Thank you. Hey, amazing presentation, dear. Thank you very much. Um, let me start with a question until we see a couple of other people type them up. So this is great for local attacks. Can you clarify potentially the attack uh, model a bit? So are these protocols only used in trusted networks or how does the, the attack scenario look like? Usually, even uh, we found that uh, these protocols are used a lot uh, even in uh, by default uh, programs, like when you use your uh, user interface of uh, Ubuntu machine to uh, search for uh, printers around, it, it it will use by default even without knowing uh, multicast DNS and DNS is this to find nearby uh, connected um, uh, printers. Uh, we found that cases it is also used in Windows and uh, these uh, protocols are used a lot, especially in IoT devices like Apple TV, uh, Google Chromecast, printers, uh, CCTV cameras, a lot. Thank you. Um, let's, there's other questions from folks. They will likely come 
later on. Thanks again for your presentation. This is cool. It was a nice, uh, nice overview to these vulnerable attacks. And um, let's move on to the next talk.